Now, President Trump has unveiled his plans for what he claims is a credible peace deal between Israel and the Palestinians, including a promise to keep Jerusalem as Israel's undivided capital. Mr. Trump announced the proposals at the White House alongside the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The president said the deal would work, but no Palestinian officials were involved, and tonight they rejected the proposals as a conspiracy. Now, at the heart of the conflict is a dispute over land ever since the creation of the State of Israel back in 1948. The UN backs the creation of a separate Palestinian state, but Israeli West Bank settlement on land captured back in 1967 has complicated that so-called two-state solution. Israel also captured the eastern half of Jerusalem, which the Palestinians want as the capital of a future state. Let's go live to our Middle East editor, Jeremy Bowen, for the latest in Washington. Yeah, thanks very much. President Trump says he has a whole new way of making peace after years of failed negotiations, giving Israel the security it deserves, giving Palestinians the state they crave. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the critics of what he's proposing have used words like the coercion of the Palestinians to describe what he's talking about, and even the word apartheid. So the stakes are high, but the chances of things getting better are low. In the East Room of the White House, it felt more like a party than a press conference. Donald Trump and Benjamin Netanyahu congratulated each other. Their entourages clapped and whooped. As everyone knows, I have done a lot for Israel, moving the United States Embassy to Jerusalem, recognizing, <laughs> recognizing the Golan Heights, and frankly, perhaps most importantly, getting out of the terrible Iran nuclear deal. And now comes a document that attempts to seal Israel's victory in a century-long conflict, which Palestinians will read as surrender terms, not a peace proposal. It almost exactly replicates Mr. Netanyahu's deepest beliefs about Israel's security. And it's right to the land most of the rest of the world says is occupied Palestinian territory. For too long, far too long, the very heart of the land of Israel where our patriarchs prayed, our prophets preached, and our kings ruled, has been outrageously branded as illegally occupied territory. Well, today, Mr. President, you are puncturing this big lie. In Gaza tonight, Palestinians demonstrated their side has been deeply divided. Opposition to the Trump document could finally unite them. The Palestinians were already boycotting the Trump administration because of its root and branch support for Israel. The Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, wasn't a party to the proposals and rejected them straight away. I say to Trump and Netanyahu, Jerusalem is not for sale. All our rights are not for sale and are not for bargain. They're arguing about land captured by Israel in the 1967 Middle East War. For a generation, the international consensus has been that no peace is possible without a Palestinian state on the land with a capital in Jerusalem. Today, the land is sliced up by walls, wire and checkpoints. The Trump plan wants to throw out the old consensus to offer a sort of state to the Palestinians if they agree to restrictions approved by Israel. And Israel has a chance to get bigger, with what looks to be a green light to a next territory it wants, like here in the Jordan Valley. The timing suits the two leaders, a distraction from elections and serious charges. High crimes and misdemeanors for Trump, bribery and corruption for Netanyahu. This may be the deal of the century for the Israeli government, but it's not for the Palestinians. It could create a sense of frustration anger and hopelessness, which in such a combustible part of the world is dangerous. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News at the White House.